Hey everybody, this edition of Lineheart Radio is brought to you by the world's first creatine coffee. Each scoop is a full cup of a Colombian Arabica bean coffee infused with five grams of a creatine monohydrate. Now here's the deal, guys. A lot of people have differing opinions about creatine, and unfortunately a lot of really shitty supplement companies have tried to sell it to kids that want to get big and they package it as some kind of steroid alternative and they tell you if you cycle it and if you stack it then you'll gain a bunch of muscle mass and at the end of the day none of that is true what is true is that it's one of the most studied and beneficial supplements on the market for strength recovery and endurance so whether you're a runner whether you are a strength athlete Uh, or whether you're somebody that wants to enhance cognitive function and just feel healthier in everyday life, a pharmaceutical-grade creatine monohydrate is going to help get you there. Go to www.creatinecoffee.com to learn what all the hype is about. And now, on to the show. Uh. Hey guys, this is Lionheart Radio. I'm your host, Memo Cho, co-founder of Lou Aviv, along with... Hi guys, Claudia Challoner, Doctor of Physical Therapy and nationally ranked powerlifter. We have a special guest today, DJ Marikami. I got it, yes, right (laughs) on. Um, He is a certified personal trainer. He is FRC mobility specialist, certified nutritionist, certified level one Agoscu upper and lower body mobility and movement. He is AN Olympic weightlifting level one certified and the certified stick mobility coach so thanks for coming on stick mobility yeah (laughs) (laughs) all right awesome so i am really stoked to have you on today um and i want to talk about your training methods and what what what's your training methods and what do you want to provide your clients with yeah i mean I'm always trying to figure that out too. What are my training methods? Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm glad I could ask you. You're like one of the strongest people I know, <laughs> the smartest people I know. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think if you were to send your mom to go, her doctor told her to get healthy, what would you have her do? Mm-hmm. Move. Move? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's a tough question because there's so many things that she can do, but and they all think they're right. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I think that there's a lot of different paths to get to to the end, too, that will work yeah. efficiently for a lot of different people. So this is, I don't think there's necessarily a right way or a wrong way, Yeah. per se. Um, or maybe there's better, different ways for different people. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, totally. I feel like, because uh, I went through high school bodybuilding, mm-hmm. and then... Uh, uh, speed and plyometric work and then power lifting phase olympic lifting phase (laughs) (laughs) calisthenic phase and um yeah at the time i was doing it i thought that was the best way to do it right and that's what i had other people do yeah (laughs) and i feel like we're all like that like you're doing what your trainer is good at Mm -hmm. and passionate about yes always 100 percent yeah i I think Uh uh-huh and um yeah just like what do you get strong at? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I had a, like an existential crisis trying to figure that out, like <laughs> depression. Like, <laughs> what is what is strong? Does it mean barbell lifts? You know, power Olympic lifts, uh-huh. uh, body weight. Mm-hmm. So, so what is yeah. strong for you? Yeah. What do you define what is strong as strong? Right? <laughs> yeah, after all that, you figure it out. Strong? Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, well now that kind of brought me out of my my depression. <laughs> yeah. I think I think everything is is strength. Mm-hmm. So when people say mobility after our Dr. Andrea Spina, man just knowledge bombs. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, I think mobility is a uh, aspect of strength. Mm-hmm. Um I think, you know, just body weight control is a aspect of strength. Um it's it's all how strong are you? You know, if you're if your hip can't go there but passively can go up here you're just not strong enough to get there yeah and if you call it mobility that's that's fine but me thinking oh i'm just weak that's what got me to be like oh i need to work on this like yeah i could get stronger yeah um yeah so i think everything is strength i think the strongest people in the world are uh kids if you watch kids they have that uh um 
walk it off strength. You know, mm-hmm, yeah, they just, totally. <laughs> they just eat shit and they get up and they smile and they don't tear anything. Um, they could just, you know, yeah. they're all loose Shake it and limber. Off it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's, um, I think that's a lot of athleticism. Mm-hmm. You could react, absorb, and deal with the environment. Mm-hmm. And it's not so much, I'm strong enough for me to take this straight barbell and do this. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, what if someone hits you with a barbell you know, and you fall? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, and that you can't, like we were talking about earlier, um, about the BOSU ball. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's closer to yeah real natural strength right so you you have to think about if you're out in the yard doing some work you're going to have an odd shaped stone or bag of mulch or something that's not going to be that nice barbell with the weight equally distributed on both sides and so you've got to still be able to brace your body and move efficiently without injuring yourself to be able to move with that odd shaped object Right, right. Yeah, I wonder uh, if there's anything outside the gym that you would pick up like a barbell with the weights on the outsides, your hands on the yeah, outsides, yeah. <laughs> and if, how much that crosses over to picking up a rock. Because I personally started picking up rocks uh, two years ago, uh-huh. just where I take a walk, there's a bunch of rocks, so I tried lifting. And I couldn't lift up <laughs> really any of the heavy rocks. Uh, is it an odd shape? Um, you know, I thought it was just because it was a different skill. Uh-huh. But um, it's really different than lifting up a barbell. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, you guys know Julian Banau. Yeah. 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 So he talks about most people externally rotate on a barbell lift. Mm-hmm. And a hinge is a... Uh, deadlift is an internal rotation of the hip, mm-hmm. which I didn't think about because I was thinking, you know, twist the ground apart, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> torque, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. with the band around your knees and everything. Yeah. Um, so I, it's funny. I had a one of my girls that I trained. She's super strong. Um, so she deadlifts a lot, squats a lot, and um, I had her pick up a 50 pound, like a bag of rice at Costco sandbag and she was immediately like had trouble picking it up she's like oh my back like it's 50 pounds i'm like you deadlift like, <laughs> so much yeah. so we stopped you know conventional deadlifting and just did sandbag work for two three months mm-hmm. and um every time she got stronger with the sandbag she still it was something in her head saying this is bad i'm gonna get hurt yeah. i think it was because you have to pick it up naturally completely different than you pick up a barbell. Yeah, totally. And I probably yelled at her for not yeah. <laughs> doing it naturally. Ago at some point. Yeah, and then she goes back to the barbell and deadlifts a lot more fluid and natural and feels better. And uh, that was not for me getting any cues. That was just learning how to pick up something we naturally pick up for, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and exactly what we're talking about with the Bosu ball. Yeah. <laughs> so the Wex, WEC method, what is it? Yeah, WEC yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, how you were describing to me this activation is what I was doing last week um, in the trees. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I got on the tree, and when you're standing there high above the ground, you're, you're not going to want to fly. You're bracing, <laughs> and you automatically know what to do. Uh, yeah, I was, I was with Rafe Kelly. You know, uh-huh. You guys got to interview that guy. Okay. <laughs> so but um, he has an evolved move play. Okay. Thing. But uh, so we got in the tree, and I was climbing down this limb, and I noticed I automatically went into the quadruped contralateral bear crawl. Yeah. Was squeezing because I don't want to <laughs> fall. Um, and I was like, dude, I spend so much time having people crawl on the ground because. We know it's good for us. They say it's good for us. Uh-huh. I guess that's why. It's because yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> we can do it outside. But yeah, there you're like, no, this this hand and this foot. No, don't put your butt here. It's the coaching is so hard, and I think it's because they're like, well, why? <laughs> why am I on the ground crawling? Okay, it's yeah. good for you. Like, I think that's a big thing. And it's like, why though? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but you go in a tree and it's like, okay, you don't have to think why you're like, mm -hmm. I'm doing the thing to get me to the next step. Uh -huh. And everything I'm squeezing isn't because I know that it's because I feel I have to do that. Yeah. This um, is my security. Yeah. There's consequences. Yeah. If you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Like we're talking about yard work, the, the variability and, and everything, you're just forced to do it a certain way mm -hmm. and you can't get really good at compensating or using a different way like with a linear dead straight object mm -hmm. which is unnatural you mm -hmm. know? yeah um yeah so i've been i've been thinking about that lately what's a lot of fitness professionals are talking about stick to the basics don't do fancy variability just you know squat bench and dead and, and crossfit <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, yeah but i don't i think i disagree I think maybe the more dynamic, um, chaotic system that you can't break down and, and simplify, maybe working from that way um, is also important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably both sides. Maybe it's a mm -hmm. feedback loop. But yeah, the whole. I mean, I love the barbell, <laughs> but uh, I wonder how many people have hurt themselves from it or have been helped by it in the long run. Yeah. It's nothing to do with barbells, it's just from what we mm -hmm. tell ourselves what we should be doing. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And from a natural, like how the, how the human moves and naturally, how that how that plays in. Okay. <laughs> 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 or leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's just about like the body to natural movement and, and how we move as humans trees and lifting up rocks like that's what we have been doing for for years and years yeah so. and it's fun <laughs> it is fun yeah <laughs> totally yeah it's 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 um reward mm -hmm. yeah but i guess the only thing is you can't uh scale it and uh standardize it and compete as well in it yeah unless you're in the the Scottish games, is that what it is, where they pick up the... Yeah. Oh, they do that in Strongman. Yeah, Strong, they, Strong they, Man, they, yeah, they do yeah, Atlas Stones, yeah. 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 Which is great. <laughs> yeah, so what's funny is I started doing the Atlas Stones a couple of years ago. And I finally used it outside the gym when I was getting rid of uh, doing yard work. I got rid of an old cement box planter. And sure enough, same technique, just bring it oh, up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> tucked it in, got it in the truck bed. I think it was like... 200 pounds, which is the most I've ever done. Like, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. are right there. Yeah, got rid of it. Functional fitness. <laughs> I, just find it. Dude, I helped uh, my buddy Keith. I helped him move the other day, and um, I was bringing like a washer upstairs, uh -huh. like from the uh, van, and um, I was like, "This is just the sandbag carries are coming in really handy now. Yeah. Like it's just crosses over." really well the more variability yeah yep. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah totally. the awkward hold how it's not stable you know it's that that's it's awesome awesome work to do yeah so what do you typically incorporate into because you do small group training mostly mm -hmm. um and then some one-on-one so what do you typically include into your training with, with a group? like what's it what's a day look like for you i mean i know you um, want to keep it variable so it's all going to be a little different but what are well, I do, uh, I just try to hit, so I have, it, have it on my phone, so when we get the workout and it's listed, I kind of got this from the uh, Agatsu people, I mm -hmm. changed a little bit, but I have like, I list their workout as a menu, so I have vitamins first, greens, main dish, and then dessert, mm -hmm. and vitamins are like, you know, do your joint, you know, rotations, mm -hmm and try to move to your end ranges mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like taking your daily vitamins just for health. And that's something you're not gonna see right away. You're not gonna get jacked in a, two yeah. months, but long-term, that's how you you know stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Greens is more some, uh, we'll do some mobility type exercises. Uh, main dish is strength work. And um, dessert is, you know, Get a nice pump, a nice yeah. sweat, you know, or, may, or maybe like uh, more of a Metcon conditioning type uh -huh. of thing. Yeah, awesome. Um, and I just try to hit as many planes of movement. And um, like, I don't think I've 
programmed a push up in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But we do a lot of crawling. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. And, and rotational stuff and reaching. Yeah. So, yeah, just try to make it fun, which is yeah. a, different for me because if you asked me a few years ago, I would have been like, oh, squat, bench, dead. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. Um, pull up. Yeah. Don't mess around with these things just to look cool on Instagram. Like, uh, stick to the basics. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I said, I think the variability from that top down method. I think that might help people. Yeah. Someone was just telling me there's a, a world champion, some young girl's a rock climber. So she grew up rock climbing competitively and never really did gym work like pull ups, strict pull ups that much. Yeah. Just rock climbing. And they had her test a one arm pull up weighted. I think it was like 25 pounds on her oh. hips. And she just busted it out like nothing. <laughs> never, wow. people practice that for decades yeah. <laughs> one arm and this girl just because her joints are so yeah. strong everywhere yeah um just busted it out wow. That's awesome. and yeah we hear about this like other countries these older people who uh stay active and mm -hmm. they don't squat but i saw a girl in thailand who have a better squat than all of her in my life she's like 60 years old just playing with a kid in the squat yeah. um yeah, but she's she just lives down there as part of her life. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Well, I think you quoted something I had, might have been on your Instagram page the other day about how the more that you blend our mobility and stability work or our warm ups per se into our strength training and our actual you know, workouts, uh, then the healthier we're going to be in the future. I might be misquoting that. Yeah, but, yeah, pretty much. But yeah, that's yeah. kind of the basis of, of what I was talking about. And I love that. That's awesome that ble bleeding those two is, I think, where you're going to get the most longevity out of your body. You're going to feel the best doing any kind of functional activities throughout your daily life. But it's also going to help you improve in if you're competitive with certain whatever, powerlifting or yeah, lifting or whatever. Yeah, so. Definitely. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, I think the whole goal is to, my personal, so my goal for myself is to be just like a kid again. Forget everything I learned growing up and go backwards. <laughs> um, yeah, I love watching like kids at recess. Not in a creepy way, but <laughs> I mean, you guys know if people have kids and you watch them play, yeah. kids at school. And when they're young, they just uh, they just pop out and they're chasing each other, tagging each other. They're everything they do is reacting to their friends or to something else around them or whatever catches their attention. Mm -hmm. And when they're tired, they stop and they look around and nothing's like forced. Uh -huh. yeah. And then you get to the age where they go to PE and it's like run a mile, and then you just see their like Dreading shoulders go down and they go forward, <laughs> and they're just in this. Like, why am I doing this? <laughs> it goes back to the whole why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then they go into sports and it's like, do this one thing a million times, get really good at it. Don't do anything else. <laughs> and then they um, they get out of shape and grow up and get the dad bod. And they're like, I need to get back in shape. So they think, I'm going to go back to uh, what my coach told me to do <laughs> the push up and they're running a straight line. And um, I think we forgot, like, way back when we were just playing. But we have that thing in our heads, like playing is, it's not work, it's not gonna pay off. Mm -hmm. or we should feel guilty about it. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I think we're, yeah. it's sick. It's it, uh, it makes me sad when you go by a gym and you see all the people on the treadmill and they're looking for the bike. Yeah. And it's cause like, we didn't tell them it's like, mm -hmm. we should go back maybe. You would have more fun, right? You think? Yeah, totally. Like, That's awesome. If we can, though. Or if kids nowadays are even doing that. Yeah. Because I have 10 year old kids who can't touch their toes. And... Yeah, yeah, things have changed. Well, video things... games have pretty much ruined society. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. Limited a lot, a lot of people's uh, interest in outdoor activities. So, I mean, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. But have you done the virtual reality headset? 
No. Oh. But you guys haven't tried that? Oh, <laughs> man. Go to, like, a Best Buy or the mall. <laughs> so you put it on, and you're, like, in a whole other world. Like, you could look everywhere for the safety. Yeah. And you're, like, oh, I mean, yeah. knocking shit over. <laughs> yeah. So much fun. Hopefully we go that way. Yeah, just, where you're actually acting. Like, like, tricking ourselves in the Go back. Money to, to move around. <laughs> but, hey, that's better than sitting down and making fun. Yeah, exactly. They do have those trampoline parks that I feel more adults are getting into with the gymnastics and, and whatnot. You know, you can safely oh, yeah. do flips into like a foam pit now or yeah. play dodgeball and trampolines. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that, and man, I I played I used to play dodgeball at uh, In Cahoots Sunday nights when they used to have it. And man, you, you play dodgeball for a minute as an adult and you're about to puke. You're gonna puke. <laughs> yeah. It's it's hard work, especially when you try to be competitive. Man, yeah. dodgeball is awesome fun. Dude, and they still have it. I think. Well, they do got leagues like Bobby and whatnot, but it was in a bar. They would close down the dance floor. So, so you'd you be, yeah, you'd right have now. some drinks. <laughs> and go, that's, that's, that's probably why I wanted to puke after. But still, I was having a pub and sweat, and like, man, this is so much fun. That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite games is uh, um, handball. Maybe it's called a wall ball down here. No, I mean, yeah, the handball. Sit against the wall with the big rubber one. Oh. Oh. Down the ground, hits the wall, and then the other person has to do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of my favorite games. Yeah. Yeah. As a kid, too. So I had people doing that during, like, a boot camp. Um, play the game. Uh -huh. When you lose, you have to go out and do uh, rows or push-ups or whatever, some exercise, and then you hop back in line. And um, I remember someone just not trying purposely. Oh, I lost. I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to get a workout in. Like, you know, I want to yeah. skip the game. I'm like, the game is, this no is one of the best <laughs> workouts you could do because you're not going to get this anywhere else in the gym. Mm -hmm. You're having to not only change all these directions and react to the ball with your mm -hmm. hips and your body, you're having to interact with someone else. So you're like, where are they going to put the ball? Yeah. Where do I have to be? And you're already thinking, where am I going to put the ball for them to get it out? So just not even physically, just your brain and um, your social, you know, cueing and mm -hmm. and all of that, where else do you get that except for play, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's a big piece we're missing. Yeah. Um, well, coming just, in when we walked in, you were doing the tennis ball tosses oh, yeah. in that circle group. That, that looked cool, you know, making people, well, you would have them call their name and then they would toss the ball yeah. across the, the way. So, so we so. did like a, at first, a thing where you're, you're staring ahead and we would toss the tennis ball, and you couldn't look at it. <laughs> you had to use it like your peripheral mm. vision. And um, yeah, I learned that from uh, Ido Portal. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask you yeah. about, about uh, well, because you're big into the just whole movement fitness aspect, like Ido Portel's method, right? Yeah, I trained with him last year in Thailand. Oh, uh, my camp. very and, cool. Uh, uh, I work with uh, some of the students, and yeah, that guy's. Um, he does amazing stuff. They say he has like a, he's like a cult leader. Well, I would join that. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> so but, yeah, I love listening to that guy. Can you explain his method a little bit? No, I, yeah. <laughs> um, it's breaking the code. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he's just uh, he's just digging deeper. Uh huh. So I think there's like three levels to people's like view of fitness. Mm -hmm. It's like one is muscles, mm -hmm. work the muscles. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through that stage. Yeah. Hit my thighs and my traps <laughs> and back. And, <laughs> and then uh, Ido saying, um, no, it's it's the patterns. Right. Um, what patterns can your body do? Mm -hmm. uh, and Rafe Kelly, um, he takes it one step further and says, what are the solutions you can create with your body? Mm -hmm. Which means if you're thrust in a situation like on a tree or reacting to someone else, um, okay, you could do a lizard crawl, but is that going to help you find a solution to this situation and orient yourself to what's coming at you? Yeah. Um, which was a lot of, you know, neurological stuff mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I think that's, it's closer to what we're talking about kids playing and, mm -hmm. and athleticism in general. I mm -hmm. think it's more on that end. And uh, it's hard to kind of, isolate and and put in a test tube because it's so 
variable. Yeah. But um, I think maybe working from that end and then using that as like an organic assessment to where you have limitations. Um, and then going to like FRC stuff or joint isolation, like mm -hmm. physio stuff yeah. off of that. Um, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> and can, can you explain a little bit about the FRC and the training behind that? Mm -hmm. So, man, I hope I don't bastardize this. <laughs> I, I already kind of do. Like, it took me two years to figure out what FRC was. Okay. So I took the course, and that's what brought me out of my like existential crisis. Like, okay. why? Why am I? Uh, how am I helping people? But um, yeah, he. So he says it's not so much like we get focused on the movements we make, like do this movement. Um, but are you doing it functionally as in are the joints that are creating the movement? Are they doing their job? Are you just compensating and making the shape? Mm -hmm. Like if you think about a yoga class, everyone's in there, do this pose. Everyone's going to make that shape and they're all going to look different Yeah, because they all have joints that they're compensating for or some are doing a lot of work some aren't so he's just saying you know make all your joints work nice yeah and then when you go to do a movement you're probably going to do it easier more functionally safer and stronger because you have more options in your hardware mm -hmm. um really simplistic so i was like okay that's cool and then I was like, so what do I do now? <laughs> I'm going to post some FRC, quote unquote, exercises. And, and then I realized there, there are no FRC exercises. It's just principles that you use for anything you want to do um, to make it better. Uh, is that a is that Yeah, a no, no, I mean, that, that, that makes sense. Because I, even just with my clients and stuff, I see a lot of people or, you know, in the CrossFit gym or wherever, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter kind of just going through movements sometimes to check off the box. Like, yes, I did these squats or yes, I did this whatever. And they weren't actually present with their movement and they mm -hmm. had no idea what they felt or what their body felt like when they were doing it or what joint felt like this or that. I mean, I, I, oh. I can kind of see how that, that would really relate to that because I think a lot of people just go through their workouts, their training, whatever it might be, and just are checking off boxes. Uh, yes, I did 10 of those, or yes, I did 20 of those, and then, and they had no idea what their movement felt like, or what muscles they were supposed to feel, or what, how their body was even moving. So yeah. They just knew that they, they did the movement, in quotations. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what is the you movement? <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, what, is, what is a squat? Yeah, and yeah, what are you feeling? Like, was it Dan Johnson at the Arizona Hay Pro Road squat? Um, do you guys know what Hay Pro Road is? Because I'm not sure. Yes, someone just gave that, um, just categorized that shape mm -hmm. and called it a squat. And then I think someone made it an exercise. Mm -hmm. Who was it? I, I saw some article like the history of the barbell squat or something. Huh. Oh, and it was like 1934, uh, I don't know what it was. Okay. So this guy had a bar and it was the ugliest squat ever. <laughs> um, but he started and then they made a competition and then they found out this is more efficient to do it this way. Uh -huh. And now present day, uh, we're saying push your knees up. Yeah. Like, but um, it's it's just a name we gave this thing that people do. It's yeah, like, and then we put uh, different criteria on it so we can make it competitive. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is good. That's cool. Yeah, but um. I mean, I have people, if you have someone come in and you're like, all right, do a squat. And then they're just like, like squat like this. And then they're like, okay. And then they're like, oh, you have a shitty squat. Or and then you have another four-year-old mom come in who, um, you're like, do a squat. I'm like, oh, what's a squat? I've never squat. You do this. And then they're like, look at it. Okay. And they do it perfectly. And then you're like, oh, wow. You've never squatted before. And then you're like, here's some weight. And they do it. Here's some more weight. And they struggle and like, okay. And they just get stronger every yeah. time. And those are like people who grew up doing gymnastics as a kid, which the, I don't think they like have squat routines and gymnastics. They have they, that body awareness. They have it's joint control, gymnast. body control. It's crazy. <laughs> body awareness. Yeah. Like 
yeah. high level. Yeah. Totally. Um, but they don't squat. But 20 years, 30 years later, you ask them to squat, and they're just so much better at all these things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's, I'm, we're not going to have adults do gymnastics so they can get better at squatting. <laughs> but we have, what, like, what is it in gym? It's the, I think, the body awareness and, and control. Yeah. Like, which is strength. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's that deep level that we're all trying to figure out how to give to everyone, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Um, so, um, so I was reading your blog about you sleeping on the floor. So I must ask. <laughs> yeah. So what was that about? <laughs> um, it got in my head because of uh, Katie Bowman. Um, uh, it was in Move Your DNA, one of my favorite books. Um, she has reasons for it, as in, you know, the loads put on your body mm -hmm. and uh, your tissue adapting and just being stronger. But I tried it out one night. I actually threw my mattress away so I couldn't go back. Okay. I would have went <laughs> oh, back. You, you, you went off. Yeah. After the <laughs> first day, I was like, I how do I get <laughs> uh, dude, I felt like I got an asshole. Yeah. Everywhere was sore. My neck was jacked up. Um, yeah, I was like, just, <laughs> like I got my ass beat for a month in a row. Huh. It was like that, and it just slowly got better and better. And it got to the point where I was fine doing it. Now, now I like it. Uh, I still, I slept on a bed at an Airbnb the other week. And it's, you know, it felt nice when I hopped in and I forgot about it and, you know, that's it. Yeah. But the reason, the reason I'm going to continue doing it is because I realized how I couldn't sleep on the floor naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had one of my clients' daughter tried it out. She's like, I want to sleep on the floor. And then I was like, how was it? She's like, oh, she didn't say anything. She's like, oh, the dog stepped on me and. <laughs> like she didn't get the big deal and I was like yeah that's I want to be like that too yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I guess that's that that kid strength yeah but um, yeah. yeah I remember as a kid sleeping on the ground yeah, sleep yeah. Um, sleep on the floor all the time <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't I still don't mind it I, you know anytime I go to the desert I, I got a trailer and I just sleep on the floor and, oh, yeah, yeah some days it's it's a little rough but for the most part I don't normally have a problem with it yeah so how long did you so you're still doing it now Yes, but when did you it. start doing it? Um, July or August. I think so. Oh, okay, so you've been yeah. doing it for a while now. For a while, yeah, I like it. Cool. Um, just yeah, I felt I felt weak when I realized I couldn't do it. Yeah. Same reason I take cold showers. Yeah. It's not for the health benefits. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because I want to be able to take a cold shower and not suffer. You know. Why I drink warm water in the summer, so I don't. I don't so I don't become a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> it's brutal. To me, so yeah, I, and I stop. Uh, this is exactly two weeks. I stopped drinking coffee. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's rough. Might have been the hardest. One. <laughs> uh, that's one of them. Oh, coffee brings me so much happiness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's such a great, great drug. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what else do you offer for your clients? Uh, do you do online programming as well, or, how, or do yeah. you do all one-on-one -on -one person? Um, I have online training, which is uh, offer a template, which is what we use in our classes here, uh -huh. so okay. people could train along with us. Mm -hmm. And it has the uh, video tutorials, you know, everything included. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so awesome. You mentioned the the stick. Uh, what was stick it? mobility? Stick mobility, yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. So um, Neil, Dennis, and Mitch, it's some guys mm -hmm. up north, San Jose. They uh, created uh, the system using sticks. We have some back here. You yeah. Want to play with them. Yeah. But um, you could apply force to them and bend them. Ah. Um, it's really a simple tool, but I love the fact that. I mean, one of the best tools in the gym is the ground and like a pull-up bar, right. right? But this one allows you to kind of go in that. Um, Manipulate from one movement to another. Yeah, you're right. like side bending, you're going uh, wow. transverse plane, and um, it allows you to, to get that other dimension of movement in. 
Mm -hmm. and just irradiation and, and that with the FRC stuff works really great. You could tell someone to, you know, tighten up, push here, activate that muscle, or you could put a stick in their hand and say, push it into the ground and everything, you know, yeah. goes along with it. it automatically. Yeah. Without them even thinking about it. And that's yeah. like we talked about the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, external cues, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. People don't know what you mean when you know, yep. externally rotate. You know, they don't yeah. know what that is. Yeah, no. And they, they might have never felt that ever. Or those muscles like turn on really, or they don't know what, how to associate that with. So it, those external cues are huge. Yeah. yeah. I almost wonder if I never learned internal, external rotation, or if, if we never learned cues, would, I don't know, I wonder where I'd be right now. Because I feel like I did all these cues to the max, mm -hmm. and I got injured, and then I ended up doing the opposite to bring me back into balance, mm -hmm. and that was the cure. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, we say it to help, like we don't want your knees to cave in, so we say knees out, but if your knees are neutral and you say knees out, is that helping more? It's, uh, yeah, cues yeah. Are, are weird. Yeah. So, yeah, the more you can make it natural, just, yeah. you know, do this. Um, I think there's going to be more variability. It's going to be more dependent on where they feel comfortable, but mm -hmm. you're not ingraining something unnatural. Yeah. So, so that, that's a stick. Is just a regular stick. It doesn't bend or you can't flex it or nothing? Yeah, you can bend it. Oh, you can? So, all right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, I want to mess with you guys after on this. It after this. <laughs> We're gonna play around. <laughs> and you can take really cool pictures. Post our Instagram so we can be as cool as you. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> <That's hot. laughs> we can go over the top five uh, Instagram uh, tips. <laughs> Just like and subscribe, and I'll email it to you. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so. Is there anything else that you try to incorporate into your training? So you do a lot of sandbag stuff. Do you do you work at all like with sleds or is that something that you incorporate at all? Yeah, I really don't ever do my own training. I get coaches, RC, people smarter than me like you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if I do my own training, I'm just going to do what I'm comfortable with and good at and okay. not what I suck at. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the training I have now, I'm doing sleds sandbags a lot for strength work mm -hmm. um and then i have a i work on a body weight skill like i have someone helping me with hand balancing okay. handstands yeah um yeah cool so i've kind of gotten away from the conventional barbell lifts mm -hmm. and uh, that that kind of pisses people off when you do different stuff with the barbell i think i posted something just weight loaded on one side and I'm like squatting and snatching with it. Yeah, I've seen a couple of your videos. See, I, I like that stuff because you don't see it and I'm sure it's very different, very rewarding in, in you know, obviously in a different way, but now I've been wanting to try a few of your movements. I think the most recent one you did was uh, you had the flat bench in front of you, uh, perpendicular to you, and um, you did the pigeon stretch with a barbell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that... That was, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. So you're getting, how, how would you describe that as far as more of a, a, a stretch or a strength or both? Yeah, I think of it as a, a pigeon squat. Pigeon squat. Which, if you're not doing it with weight, it's yeah. a mobility yeah. exercise. Mm -hmm. but if you have weight, I guess it's changes into something else. Yeah. Think of it like yeah, that. I was watching this. Man, that looks cool because I actually like doing the pigeon stretch and I'm going to, I want to try that next week sometime. But. Yeah, it, it just looks awesome. It's different. I had never seen nothing like that before. Yeah, just adding more load. Mm -hmm. I've seen people like hold a plate or a kettlebell on it. Mm -hmm. just add a little oh. more. It looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to look Yeah. <laughs> so, with um, talking about mobility and flexibility, stability, strength, and tying all those together, how do you find a balance with those and how do you educate people on finding a balance on those because I know sometimes I see clients that over stretch or they're doing mm -hmm. all of these crazy stretches and they have no stability at those end ranges that you were talking about because 
there is. We have we have passive range of motion and we have active range of motion. So passive range of motion for listeners is if you are um, laying on your back and someone takes your arm up overhead towards the floor and someone else can get it there for you. So that's your passive range of motion. So if that's all the way to the floor, you know, 100%, good job. But if you cannot get it there to the floor, then we're not utilizing your full range of motion. So we don't have the motor control, we don't have the strength in order to utilize your full range of motion. Is that along the same lines of what you kind of teach as yeah. far as um, passive and active kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you how, like how do you find the balance with that? I really don't um, do any passive stretching with anyone um, yes. unless <laughs> unless they need yes. it. Yes. <laughs> um, like if you're trying to do the split, and um, usually you could pick someone's leg up here and they're fine, but then you let go and it drops. Um, so they have the passive flexibility; they just don't have the active control, which is aspect of strength, so you get stronger until you kind of meet yourself there at the end range of passive and active, and then we could do some passive stretching, but almost everyone already has the passive mm -hmm. yeah. Um, ability, yeah. and yeah, that's why, I mean, kids, you could move them around <laughs> everywhere, they have all this passive ability, which is why why are kids so good at it? They just practice and they get good at like martial arts. Yeah. Like, just practice this kick a bunch of times and you're getting good at it. And then you have an adult who is being taught by the instructor who learned as a kid. And they're like, just practice. <laughs> it's like, but your joint can't do yeah. <laughs> Pop it here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think uh, active control, which I think is just the beginning of strength training. Mm -hmm. And then you add load to it and it becomes a strength exercise. Um, yeah, I like to just flow, flow that together. And a little bit more um, organic strength work, which is you're reacting to someone else or, some, or the environment um, and not a static lift with an inanimate object. Yeah, so where can people find you on Instagram or first Instagram? What's your Instagram? Uh, Instagram is a uh, strong camps. All right, cool. A lot of good videos on there. So check that out for sure. And your website and the website is danielmurakami.com. And if you could give one piece of advice to all of our listeners, what would it be? One piece of advice. I would say to play more or at least make something you love doing your goal and if you can't do it anymore that should be your goal of training is to be able to play again mm -hmm. i think that's we lost sight that's the whole reason we're we're doing this fitness thing um so we could play cool awesome love it well thanks for coming on dj yeah that's cool. yeah, thanks dj thanks for listening to lionheart radio i hope that the information from today's show will make you fitter happier and healthier for the show notes of this episode and every episode, head to www.lionheartrad.io. Yep, just like Lionheart Radio. And please, if you have the time, head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. It really helps us to know that we're on the right track in delivering you reliable information and value. As always, feedback is welcome. If you have any comments on the show or would like to suggest a guest, send me an email at rick at louaviv.com. That's L-U-A-V-I-V-E. Dot com. Thanks for your support, yeah. and we will see you next time. Bitch, I feel good. Don't I look stupendous? My shine is so endless, and shit you can do to end this. Even when I'm dead, niggas still gon' bump that chip shit. Coke, white, escalate on cinches for you dipshit. So you won't forget this. Me and West, nigga, be the coldest. People in